Hey you guys, uh, Tommy Chanel here, hanging out at Claw Hammer Supply. Today we are going to uh, be learning how to make a honeydew white pepper and lime gosa. All right, so uh, we preheated some water last night, I overfilled it a little bit, um, and now we're gonna bring it down to about eight gallons. So this is a pretty simple grain bill. We're using six pounds of wheat and four pounds of Pilsner. So now we're gonna grind our wheat. So now we're going to put our uh, grain basket in and start our mash. We're stirring uh, the mash to remove any dough balls. So now we're going to hook up our hoses and get our pump plugged in. So we're doing a protein rest for 15 minutes at 122 degrees. So we just finished our protein rest. Now we're mashing at uh, 148 for 90 minutes. So there's a lot of confusion on how um, the style of beer is pronounced. A lot of people say goes, G-O-S-E but it's actually pronounced Goza. Goza. Goza is a sour German wheat beer with the addition of coriander and salt. The mash is over now, uh, so we're gonna pull the grains and start the boil. We've let the uh, grains drain for about 10 minutes and we remove them. So sanitation is always important when you're brewing beer. Today it's particularly important since we're making a kettle sour style. We're only doing a 15 minute boil right now to sterilize the wort and the equipment. And after the souring process is complete, we'll finish out the brew day with a full 60 minute boil. So next we're gonna run the wort through the chiller before we turn the water on to sanitize it. So now we're gonna cool our wort down to 95 degrees before we add our lactobacillus. We set our alarm to 100 degrees so we knew when our wort was done chilling. We're gonna add lactic acid to our wort now and small doses until the pH hits 4.5. So I've taken uh, some paper towels, I've dipped them in star sand and wrang them out. I'm going to go ahead and place this over the edge of the kettle. We're doing this because we have to hold the probe thermometers in the kettle for a little bit of time and it's just going to give me somewhere I can put my arm to keep it sanitized. So we've added uh, about five pipettes full of lactic acid to our liquid here and that's really just kind of a a gauge or barometer for, for you because everyone's pH is going to be different um, and we're just really trying to hit that target. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> so we're going to use these Good Belly probiotics here that we got at the store. It contains the same lactobacillus that uh, professional brewers use uh, for kettle sours. We'll just rinse this off with star sand just before we replace our lid. Plug your hole. I just covered this hole up with some uh, 
some tape so that it prevents any bacteria in the air from getting into your kettle. So the last thing we're gonna to do today is set our controller to 95 uh, degrees and allow our lacto ferment to kind of rest overnight and hopefully it'll be sour enough tomorrow so we can finish out our brew. Welcome back here. Um, we're on our second day, 24 hours after we added our lactobacillus to our beer and we're gonna just check it for acidity. Uh, I poured myself just a little bit here about 10 minutes ago just so the beer could cool down. It's good. It's uh, light, it's uh, crisp, it's got good acidity. There's good sourness coming out. I like where that's at. Um, I guess if we wanted it more sour than it is, we could uh, allow it to continue on at temp for, uh, for longer, but I'm really happy with where it's at. So now I'm gonna start the boil, and then uh, while we wait that, for that to come up, I'm gonna go ahead and peel my limes. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and use about an ounce and a quarter of the lime zest. When uh, you're peeling, you wanna try and um, leave as much of the pith off of the zest as you can. The pith is the white part. We are struggling a little bit because our limes are a little riper, um, so we're having a hard time digging in, but you can also clean this off with a knife. So we're gonna be using these Huel hops. Uh, these are a German hop. Characteristics are going to be slightly fruity, mild, uh, taste of crushed melon. This is calling for a half ounce of hops we're gonna add that at the 45 minute mark in our boil, so that's 15 minutes in, and uh, we're just about there right now. So we've weighed out one ounce of coriander, a quarter ounce of white pepper, and a half ounce of sea salt. We're gonna go ahead and add that to our boil at the 50 minute mark with 10 minutes left. We'll also add our lime at the 50 minute mark. Our boil is over and now it's time to chill the wort. So we filled up our uh, fermenting bucket with some star sand. We just want to make sure it's sanitized before uh, we add our um, wort to it. We're done cooling our wort down. And now we're going to add our yeast. We're using this uh, Dusseldorf wheat yeast from White Labs. It says it can be used to make an ale, a wheat Belgian, or a lager. <laughs> so we're going to um, go ahead and let this ferment for four or five days. Uh, and then we're going to add our melon. And then we'll probably give it another two days. It looks like our starting gravity is going to be 1032. We're back, it's been five days since we started fermentation and we're going to be adding our fruit to our beer today. We actually sent a low level employee to the store to pick up some honeydew. Fortunately, they got confused and brought back cantaloupe. So we're gonna be using that instead. The first step is uh, dicing the cantaloupe up into even pieces so we can blend them. So the next step, we're going to split these in half and scoop out the seeds. We're going to be using a half pound, up to two pounds of this particular fruit per gallon. Really depends on how much flavor you want to impart. So now I'm going to blend these. I'm going to pulse them so that they uh, encounter as little agitation as possible because we do not want to incorporate air. We're just going to blend our fruit and then add it to our pot, bring it up to 170 so that it can pasteurize and put it in a baggie. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're gonna to want to stir your puree. The fruit has a lot of natural sugars in it and if you don't stir it while heating, it could burn on the bottom if you put it on high. Uh, Clawhammer's controller has a very accurate thermometer. 
uh, attached to it. It's also waterproof, so we're gonna use that to measure the temperature of our puree. We're heating our puree to 170 degrees because at that temperature, uh, it's fully pasteurized. We hit 170, and we're gonna cover it to keep the nasties out. Nice. So we're gonna put the pot in cold water so we can cool it down quicker. While I'm waiting for the puree to cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and take a gravity reading. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Our final gravity is 1011. So our puree is cooled down now, and we're gonna add it to our beer. So I've uh, dumped this in star sand, and I'm gonna pour my puree into it. Start sanding my lid. So we're gonna let this sit for three days, then we're gonna keg it, carbonate it, and drink it. All right, we're back, and we're gonna try our, um, I guess we can call it a honey loaf, um, <laughs> honey loaf gosa, um, which is really cantaloupe, lime, and white pepper. I was the uh, slacker employee who bought the wrong kind of melon, by the way. So I think we already mentioned this, but Tommy was a pro chef for like 10 years, right? Pro chef. Pro chef. That's right. I'm working, working at like some of the best restaurants in the country. That's why we wanted to have him brew some beer with us and show us some weird and interesting new things to do. This being one of them. Cheers. Cheers. It smells like what you would expect like yeah. from the, considering the ingredients. A ton of cantaloupe on yeah. the nose. I've had a couple people try this. And I didn't tell them what it was, and they thought it was just like really that beer. Because <laughs> it doesn't smell right. Dude, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna say hands down, this. I'm gonna say this is the best beer that we've brewed to date. It's um, exactly what you would expect out of a Gosa. It's got a little bit of saltiness, uh, sour. This is not too far sour. Some of those Gosas really push the envelope of how sour, sour they get, but this is. Really yeah, nice. This is tart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not super sour, but more like in the tart range yeah. for sure. Man, you really get that honeydew. Honey loaf. Oh, dude, you really get that candle. <laughs> you really get that honey loaf. <laughs> yeah, the honey loaf. Which uh, is not surprising. We waited until essentially the beer was done fermenting. We put the melon in at that point, and then we let it sit for another couple days. We were thinking it might kick off and start fermenting again. And then we kegged it up. So I, I feel like you really get a lot of the fresh cantaloupe taste, and that's probably because we added it so late. Yeah, it's really fresh. How about coriander, do you? I think you get the, the lime, I get the you lime. Get the lime. Yeah. I think the coriander and the white pepper are just kind of nice background, rounding mm -hmm. flavors. After you've already swallowed the beer, it's just a little bit of like, spiciness, or, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, like peppery, peppery. Peppery. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. That's great. I definitely highly recommend uh, trying this recipe out. Brew it up comment on this video. Let us know how you feel about it and we'll pin the comments at the top. And feel free to use honeydew. Yeah, or yeah, feel free to use the correct <laughs> yeah, ingredients as well. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of our videos. Check out our website, clawhammersupply.com. See ya. See ya.